All right, so I just wanted to talk to you guys quickly about um, one of the key things that you can look at to talk a little bit further about your assessment to show a little bit deeper um, understanding or some critical thinking. So one thing we can think about is what we call percentage contributions and looking for what's the biggest source of variation within the series. So time series, we know it goes up and down. Um, and it's trying to kind of talk about is the biggest source of that variation throughout the whole time period either from like the seasonal or the periodic effects or is it because of the trend? Um, so there's a calculation that we can do for this and one place that you're going to want to go is your insight decompose graph and I'm going to have a second video that will go through the actual graph how to do the calculations but here I'm just going to talk to you guys about the concept of what this percentage contribution means. So the first thing that you do is you find your min and max, the total range of the raw data. And again, I'll go through those calculations with you on the actual graph page, so I'm not going to worry about it now. But we're looking for the overall range. So what that means in this context here is from the very bottom to the very top, or the lowest one to the highest one. That's the overall range you're looking for, like how big and how little is that real data, the actual real data within your time series. So from the lowest to the highest, it might be from the start to the finish, but it, it might not be. It might be ones that are in the middle like you see here. So that's what we're looking for our raw range. We're calculating out what was the raw data's biggest increase, like how far did it go up and how far did it go down at its biggest extreme. And then we want to calculate the range of what we call so you can call that the raw range. And then we're going to look at what we're going to call our range for our smoothed data, and this is for your trend. So you calculate the lowest point of the trend and the highest point of the trend, and again, that's the trend line. So the range, how far did the trend change over time? And we compare it to how far the raw data changed over time. So in this graph, you'd be calculating this end to this end, the percentage change from there to there and how much of an impact that had on the comparing it to the overall range. Again, the red to red. And again here, going from blue to blue, how far did the trend change over time? And again, the last one, how far the trend changed over time? And both of these making the comparison back towards overall in the big picture with the real data, what was the maximum to minimum change in that series. Another one we're going to look at then would be the seasonal, because we're trying to compare between the two, between whether or not we have a seasonal effect that's really big, or whether we have a um, raw effect that's really big. And we can't really see that on these graphs that I've got here, but you would look on, on the decompose graph. And you would look to see, for the average seasonal effect, what's the biggest change for the average seasonal effect. So again, in the next video, I'll actually show you that. But just so you can think in pictures here without the numbers getting confusing first, if we look at these graphs, these four ones that I've got here, you can kind of make a, an image in your head or a decision in your head about really what's, what's the biggest percentage contribution here. So if I look at this first graph here, you'll notice that the trend line, that it has a really steady and strong increase over that time period. And that's a pretty big move, right? And it matches almost perfectly from what the range, the actual raw range is, right? And the seasonal effect in this case is actually pretty small. So the trend here on this particular graph is big and the seasonal effect is really small because its little variations from season to season, which would be roughly, you know, something like that, are hardly anything compared to the change between the two red lines there, the big overall effect. So again here, the trend drives the biggest amount of change because it makes the most variation throughout that series. This one over here, we see that our seasonal effect is actually really big and our trend is really small. The change in the trend from here to here is very small relative to the overall change that happened from the red line down to that red line there. Versus the seasonal, which might be something very similar to that, matches almost perfectly again with the overall range or the raw range that happens. So in this case our trend change is very small relative to the seasonal change that happens from year to year in terms of what's causing the most variation in this sequence over this time series. These two graphs here show examples of 
places where, in fact, the seasonal effect and the trend are actually pretty large. So here they both contribute quite greatly. You can see that changes for seasons would be something rough like that, which is actually pretty big relative to the raw. And again, this change in the trend is still pretty big relative to the raw change overall. So both seasonal and the long-term trend have a big impact on your variation for this graph. And same here, we see that our trend change is actually pretty big relative to the raw change. And the same, our seasonal changes are still pretty big relative to the raw change. So you'd see a pretty big influence here of both seasonal and the trend. Now when we look at the decompose graph in the other video, I'll show you how to calculate that so you can actually get numbers that make it easy to decide which is the biggest influence. So residuals, just to kind of well, actually, we're not going to talk about residuals too much, but they are going to come up in the decompose graph, so I do want to talk about that. Oops. Um, the residuals are what we call like our random noise. They're the things that come up randomly in the data. And this is going to show up in the decompose graph as well. So we're going to talk about it. Um, the residuals, the random bits of data in the data, and they're basically what's left over after you've taken the trend and the average seasonal effect out. So they tell us things that were not expected. Residuals are basically the difference between what you'd expected to see and what actually happened. So things that can cause big residuals would be something like a freak snowstorm, right? And then suddenly it totally changes who gets out to the supermarket or whether or not people are able to fly into Auckland. Um, a great white shark attack, you know, if a shark eats a swimmer at a beach, there might not be very many swimmers there for the next few weeks because they're a bit nervous versus usually if there hadn't been a shark attack there'd be heaps of people there swimming. And that's the kind of thing that can cause a residual and so in research you guys can actually go back and look to investigate to see if you see a residual in your data was there a reason for it? Was it the global financial crisis? Was it a shark attack? Was it a really good exchange rate? Was it a terrorist attack? You know anything that could be going on that kind of causes a one-off so I'll get into that and talk about it um, on the decompose graph. So this is more just about the calculations, but um, I'll talk about it in the, in the other graph. It makes more sense there.